What's up, Wargamers? We're back with another edition of Budget Wargamer, and we're excited to show you guys some of the new Chaos Space Marines multi-part kit that is coming out, along with Abaddon in this next week's pre-release. So this coming Saturday, you'll be able to place your pre-orders in for Abaddon, a new terrain piece that looks like it's basically the Chaos version of a Stargate, uh, to be determined what that really is, but it doesn't appear to allow you to teleport things onto the battlefield like you think a Stargate would. It appears to amplify the psychic powers of psychers, as well as some other, as well as some other units that are nearby. But it's real exciting to see that following up on Shadow Spear that just released yesterday on Saturday in stores, that we're basically a week to two weeks away from seeing it backed up by further chaos support, in part with Abaddon as the War Master and then also the Chaos Space Marines and some other stuff. So let's dive in and take a look at what we've got. If you missed my video yesterday on the Parabellum's game Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings, I encourage you guys to check it out, and I will put a link up here somewhere. That way you guys can check that video out. It's an exciting new fantasy-based war game um, brought to you by the guys at Parabellum War Games. So diving into the Warhammer community website, We've known about Abaddon here for a little bit of time, and of course we knew that there were going to be some Chaos Space Marines by way of Shadow Spear. A lot of people who are naysayers mostly, I, I take to people who whine about all these single pose kits, is really just being hypercritical gamers who are probably just unappreciative of the fact that we basically get awesome new releases every week from Games Workshop. I've been in the hobby about 25 years, and that's long enough to know that Games Workshop used to not be that way and you used to have to wait months to get a new pre-release and also you didn't know it was coming out most of the time unless you subscribed to the White Dwarf. So now we're getting all this information for free on the Warhammer Community website. So it looks like you can also use the War Altar or whatever they're calling that um, from Age of Sigmar to help out with your demons too. At least that's what it was looking like. So let's dive in here. This is part of the Vigilus Ablaze campaign book so that's where you're going to get the rules for the Black Legion, or there's also apparently a new upcoming Chaos Space Marines Codex, but have no need to fear. Um, Games Workshop acts like there's nothing wrong. If you have the existing Chaos Space Marines Codex or Index, um, Heretic Astartes, whatever they're calling it these days, I still go off the old world names, but... They say you can just buy the Vigilus Ablaze campaign book and that'll be a filler for you, but there is the beautiful Abaddon miniature that's coming out with probably his best looking head since there appear to be three different heads for Abaddon. Uh, he's got the Talon of Horus, which I think used to be actually one of the Talons of the Emperor. Horus being the right hand man, literally had the right hand claw similar to the Emperor's um, Talon. And then he's also got that um, Chaos god or chaos demon prince trapped in his sword so that's going to be an awesome model probably about the size of gilman they say he's smaller than the primarch so don't expect him to be as big as magnus or as big as mortarian but um, certainly probably going to be equal to them on the battlefield in some regards um, so definitely looking forward to him he's probably gonna be about 60 65 bucks just by himself and that's just me taking a guess i'm sure there's already some pricing information out there but these are the new Chaos Space Marines, so if you're looking to play Black Legion or any Chaos Space Marine for that matter, this multi-part multi kit is going to scratch that itch um, in the fact that it's going to allow you to build them with bolters, it's going to allow you to build them with bolt pistol and chainsword, as well as some other equipment such as uh, multiple special weapon options and multiple heavy weapon options. So as we saw with the... Um, Black Legion that were included in the Shadow Spear kit, they appeared to be locked in to using the auto cannon as their only long ranged weapon. But here we're seeing in the background up here where my mouse is highlighting uh, that they've got a heavy bolter, but they said that there's multiple heavy weapons in here. This is going to be a flexible enough kit to apparently allow you to put together assault troops as well as your basic troops and then some heavy support or fire support troops as well. So in here we're seeing a melt -a gun all the way in the back. Most of these guys appear to be equipped with bolt pistol and chainsword. We've got a bolt uh, plasma pistol on the aspiring champion. And this guy right here pulling the ammo belt, Sylvester Stallone style, looks pretty, pretty awesome. So there's going to be a lot of updating here because those existing Chaos Space Marines may not be the oldest kit still in production, but they certainly were getting a little fatigued. I think it's actually the Corn Berserkers that are most hosed, even though you get 12 of those for about $37.25 US dollars. 
but these can be mixed and matched if you're looking at taking those Chaos Berserker heads, although they look a little bit out of place in terms of the dating on them because they're losing quite a bit of detail. Those were like the uh, uh, two-piece uh, stainless steel stamp um, sprues where they didn't hold a lot of detail on the sides, but these, these guys look rather glorious, as some people would say, or inglorious, um, if you guys call these inglorious bastards, but... Um, I'm expecting these things to come in at about 60 bucks. That's the going rate right now for a kit of Primaris Space Marines. It would be nice to see them come in just a little bit under and be at the $50 range. Um, although it seems like they're pushing the envelope of raising prices as is. That is inflation. You know, with a good economy comes a cost of living adjustment. So if you're a hobbyist, I think we just have to bite the bullet and realize that these guys are probably going to come in at 60 rather than 50 But I would love to be wrong on that like to see your take in the comments below. If this is one of your first times watching a Budget Wargamer video, I encourage you guys to make sure that you hit that like button and hit the bell next to it for notifications because I'm back in the habit of doing regular weekly and bi-weekly Warhammer 40,000 as well as other war games news and announcements. And then we've got some other stuff to show you guys coming up here in the near future. Just got back from Gamma and there's some other news that has been released there. So here's a little bit of kit bashing going on to show how you can make some different legions. I'll get my mug out of the way. Um, it looks like we've got some iron warriors on the left hand side so definitely appears to be a missile launcher included in this kit so that's going to be one of the heavy weapons. Then they're showing another one with power fist and plasma pistol. Could be an aspiring champion. And then really cornate looking with the black and red and some of the gold in there. Not quite a corn berserker but you can see how that dynamic running pose with the bolt pistol and chainsword could easily be something like a corn Berserker if you were so inclined to make them yourself. So let's take a look at some of the other kit bashing and some of the other legions that we've got there. Um, we've got some Night Lords on the left that's showing some more bolt pistol and close combat weapon. One of the special weapons we're seeing here is a flamer. So we know we've probably got a plasma gun, we've got a melt -a gun, we've got a flamer. Um, can't think of any other types of special weapons that would be in that kit. But we've got the plasma gun being shown on the right hand side. I forget what those guys are called. Uh, let me know if you know what they are. I don't think that's Sons of Horus, but I uh, basically could be wrong on that one with the uh, teal and silver, but still, still pretty cool looking, not your typical chaos. I tend to think of chaos as being black and gold, uh, red and silver, red and gold, red and brass, things like that, but you can paint them up certainly a number of ways. Now this is the 40K Chaos Stargate, at least that's what I'm calling it. It looks like a Stargate. I think everyone's going to call it a Stargate. It's got the runes or glyphs all around it, just like the Stargate does. It's even propped up. Um, so this is going to be a terrain piece with special rules, as we've been seeing pretty much every army has got some sort of terrain piece coming out that's going to provide an area of effect buff when units are close to it. And let's dive in and see what they say about this here on the Warhammer Community website. It looks like it says um, Chaos players can look forward to a new terrain piece taken as a fortification. The Noctilith Crown is more than just an awesome centerpiece, but a tactical linchpin for the Heretic Astartes, um, giving nearby units an invulnerable save. So that could be valuable if you plan to hunker down, but remember it's a fortification, so it's not going to move, because pretty much only Tau have the moving fortifications. So you get an invulnerable save by being near it, which is nice. And it's also going to make it easier for Chaos Psychers to cast their fell magics. Not saying that maybe it gives additions to the dice roll, or maybe it allows them to re-roll one of the dice of their choosing or something like that. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what the actual special rules are. So if you're looking at playing Demonkin or Black Legion or any of the other Heretic Astartes, this could be a piece for you to consider. Although I don't see a lot of people in competitive play taking fortifications um, I'd like to see if something like this could actually make the regular rounds in your league play or some of your narrative play and stuff like that. And of course, it could potentially make it into um, some of the competitive play as well in the ITC circuits. Um, it's, it's really to be seen because we don't know the rules for it yet, but it says it also represents some exciting developments in the lore. Last year in Forgebane, that was the limited release box with the Necrons and the Adeptus Mechanicus where we first saw the Armager Warglaives being released. It says we found out Blackstone can be attuned to weaken or strengthen the power of the warp. So the neck, neck, Noctilith crown is one example of what happens when the Heretic Astartes get their hands on this miraculous mineral. So I guess it's presumed that the rings in here are made out of Blackstone, similar to what the Blackstone fortresses are made out of. 
and it's used to sunder the veil and allow ingress for their demonic allies. So I guess maybe this could be used for summoning demons and things like that. Um, of course, the Vigilist Ablaze book is a continuation in the Vigilist campaign. So this is the second in the Vigilist series. The last one we saw giving a lot of buffs to all armies. Um, so far, I haven't seen any rules being leaked out for things like the Drukari or the Orcs and stuff like that, like we saw in the last Vigilist campaign book. This one, it's kind of presumed that it's going to focus a lot on chaos, but I would like to see still some special rules come out for all of the armies so that this book would be something you could pick up no matter what you play to get a little bit of buffs. I tried to zoom in here on this Black Legion to read the rules because I was really excited to find out really what their abilities, their tactical objectives, their warlord traits, and, and uh, things like that would be. But it appears no matter how much you zoom in, it's kind of just garbled to the point where you could read the really big bold print, but the, the small text appears to be a little bit illegible and it's not a zooming factor. I think they purposely uploaded that with a little bit of pixelation there to prevent you from jumping ahead. But there could be people out there who have already de deciphered this into what these traits are and I'm, I'm really interested to see. Um, so you've got ways to paint your renegade forces and then here's a little bit of a sneak peek about how you can kind of mix in the de demons in with this these forces. So th these are some um, units that come from Age of Sigmar pretty much, but as you know with most demons, they can be played in Age of Sigmar or Warhammer 40,000. So you have the Skull Taker here, the Blood Master, and also the Skull Ar Altar. The Skull Altar just came out with the Blades of Corn book uh, with Age of Sigmar. So if you're playing corn, it looks like you could take a Skull Al Altar as well as an objective or I guess the fortification. So um, usually there's a limit to how many fortifications you could take. So you may not be able to take the Necro uh, Noctilith. That's such a weird word, but you know it's all about um, copywriting and trademarking all the words in there. So that's that gives you an option. And then it says Kodok, Codex Chaos Space Marines, the updated edition. So this is going to include a compendium of all the new units and rules. It's got the little 2.0 skull there. Um, so it's going to be updated, probably include all the updates from the chapter approved. It makes sense, of course. And then it says right here, so not to piss off the people that have already gotten their Chaos Space Marines Codex, it says I already own a previous version, then you should get the Vigilus Ablaze. Segue into buying something new, right? And if you don't have the previous version, you got to buy something new anyways, because you should always purchase your own army's codex, whether you're using something like Battlescribe or one of the other army builders to be able to build your force, even if it's the official Warhammer 40k uh, combat roster. And it's, if you want more chaos, you can download the Shadow Spear Chaos data sheets for free. And then also you should get Shadow Spear. I mean, logically, if you're playing chaos and you don't already have a, a massive force, may as well. Plus those obliterators are really awesome looking models. Um, criticize them whether you want to or not for being single pose. I happen to like them and they seem to do a really good job of making sure that single pose does not mean boring pose when it comes to new Warhammer miniatures. So feel free to go in and download those right here. I'll provide a link if you'd like to get a look at those for yourself. But drop a comment below. Let me know what you're up to. What do you most look forward to here in 2019? I'd say a lot of people have probably kind of forgotten with this little uh, mental judo that Sisters of Battle are promised to us, so it looks like maybe we won't see them in Q2, because, I mean, we may or may not, but we'll probably see them Q3, Q4, and it would be interesting to see if they bring those in as a way of turning the tide in this Vigilist campaign and introduce them that way, although they could just dump them in non-narratively, but I think at this point Games Workshop is trying to expand the narrative, make things happen in the year 40,000 or 41,000, however you're keeping track of time, or 39,000 even, right? So, um, you know, basically, just let me know what you think and look forward to more videos here on Budget Wargamer.